Hello. Today I'm going to talk about the scientific method or how to do science. I bet you do science more than you think. I want you to think about science as a way of thinking. If you think about the most important part of science, it's really about three things. Observation. What do you notice? Guess and check. What's making that happen? How can I find out? I wonder and explain. What's the cause? What's the effect? Three things. Notice. Hmm. Guess and check. I wonder. Explain why. Let me tell you. It's also called the scientific method. You probably do this a lot. You try to use something and it didn't work. You probably use the scientific method. Hmm, why won't my cell phone turn on? I wonder, what will happen if I plug it into the wall? Oh, look at that, it turns on. If you've ever seen something that you didn't understand, you might have used the scientific method to figure out what's going on. It's a problem-solving approach. It's it's a lot of things. We might talk about this a little bit. In science, we like to use fancy vocabulary, but the ideas are the same. A hypothesis is a guess. A conclusion is what happens after you test out your idea. All of these things probably sound familiar. They are just fancier, more specific words for the same things. For example, notice, the method begins with an observation. That means to notice something, right? A question experiment, experiment is a test. Guess and check, having a hypothesis, a guess of why something is happening. You can check your guess, you can test it. That's the, the whole concept of designing an experiment. And explaining why means to communicate your results. If it's just something that happens with you, then there might be something else going on. If you can't explain your results and other people can't check them, then it's not necessarily science. And this is where it gets powerful. If other people can do it, then it's true all the time. It becomes a useful theory. Important word there, theory. Start with observation. What observations can you make here? What do you see? Don't think about what you can infer. What do you see, actually see? What about here? What observations do you see? You might, for example, see a person. Or you might think you see a person. But you don't see a person. You see an arm and a shirt. There's a hand there. You see a thumb. Okay. You don't know if they have legs. You don't know if they have another arm. You don't see it. You see what appears to be a computer. You can't really tell if it's a real computer. You can't tell if it's on. That looks like paper. That looks like a pen. You don't know if this is on Earth. You, there's lots of assumptions you might make by looking at this, but you've got to observe what's actually there. And try not to let your inferences confuse what you actually see. Same here. You see three people, it looks like. The woman looks a little bit older. You can start to make inferences about how she's feeling based on her facial expression, but those are only inferences. right? You might make inferences about when this picture took place based on the fact that it's black and white, but if you use a black and white camera, you can take this picture tomorrow. Okay, what do you actually see? Black and white picture, one woman's face, the backs of two uh, what appear to be younger people's heads with haircuts that might be old-fashioned. Anything that you can observe, any data, anything that you can gather through your senses counts as data and can be considered an observation. Tasting something can be an observation. Not that you should taste chemicals, but... If you were to taste a, a beverage, the taste of the beverage can help you understand what's in it. If it tastes salty, there's probably salt in it. If it tastes sour, it's probably acidic, etc. 
how does it smell, and so on. Here's the big thing that people don't realize about science and that scientists often don't talk about because they don't often like to. You might notice patterns. Your observations might give you hints about what you want to guess, about what you think or what possibly could be going on. But it really is up to your imagination what hypothesis you believe. There is no obvious place that hypotheses come from. You just make it up. It just comes from your what you think. It's a wild guess. It could be anybody who comes up with a brilliant hypothesis. It's not, there's no specified process for coming up with a hypothesis itself. It's just a good guess. Check this guy out. This is a famous picture of Albert Einstein where he sticks out his tongue because he was a little silly sometimes. And he said things like imagination is more important than knowledge. Because one of his most famous discoveries, the theory of relativity, came through an imaginative episode, a daydream that he had about riding on a beam of light when he was, I believe it was eight or nine years old. His ability to imagine was a key part of his skill at being a powerful and effective and insightful physicist. This guy had a world-class imagination, and that was a big reason he was good at science. So again, we're trying to boil this down into the most useful and most powerful but still meaningful process we can. These three steps, notice, guess and check, explain why. When you think of it this way, the scientific method is extremely useful and extremely common and extremely important. The end.